After spending some time in the culturally vibrant city of Zurich, it's worth venturing beyond Switzerland's financial capital on a day trip to delve deeper into the surrounding region, where the Alps seem tantalizingly close on cloud-free days. Within a couple hours of the city, you can try out walking trails or mountain bike routes or explore the charming old towns and urban culture of Zurich's nearby neighbors. Thanks to Switzerland's small size and efficient public transport system, there's not a lot that's off-limits for a day away. Here are the best day trips from Zurich. 1. U at Lyberg marking the swift transition between the urban and the outdoors, 2860 ft high U at Lyberg is the mountain on Zurich's doorstep, ablaze with wildflowers in spring and daubed with russets and golds in fall. When city dwellers want to stretch their legs, they head up here to hike, jog or mountain bike on the trails that criss-cross the woods and countryside. Topping the mountain is Uetleiberg Aussichtsturm, a steel lattice observation tower with fine views over Lake Zurich and the city. Sunset is primetime viewing. How to get to Uetleiberg, train line S10 runs from Zurich's main station to Uetleiberg twice hourly, and the journey time is under 30 minutes. From here, it's a 10-minute uphill walk to the viewpoint. At Felsneg Vantage Point, a cable car descends every 15 minutes to the town of Adliswil, from where frequent S4 trains return to Zurich. 2. Winterthur often eclipsed by the charms of nearby Zurich, Winterthur, Switzerland's sixth-largest city, packs a real cultural punch. It's home to truly stupendous art collections bankrolled by art collector Oskar Reinhardt, one of Europe's foremost photography museums and a kid-pleasing science museum, not to mention an archetypal turreted castle topping a crag just south of town. Beyond the evident appeal of its sights, Winterthur also has one of Switzerland's largest pedestrian-only old towns, lined with pastel-painted, terracotta-tiled cafes and bars, plus boutiques ideal for a leisurely mooch around. How to get to Winterthur, several trains per hour run to Winterthur's main station from Zurich, taking less than half an hour. Buses to Zurich depart from stands opposite the train station. If you're driving from Zurich, take the A1 freeway. 3. Lucerne recipe for a gorgeous Swiss city. Take a cobalt lake ringed by mountains of myth, add a well-preserved medieval Altstadt, Old Town, and a reputation for making beautiful music and then sprinkle with covered bridges, sunny plazas, candy-colored houses and waterfront promenades. Lucerne is stunning and deservedly popular since the likes of Goethe, Queen Victoria and Wagner savored its views in the 19th century. Legend has it that an angel with a light showed the first settlers where to build a chapel in Lucerne, and today it still has amazing grace. How to get to Lucerne, frequent trains connect Lucerne to Zurich, with a journey time between 45 minutes and 1 hour. If you're driving, the A14, A4 freeway provides the road link to Zurich. 4. Burn wandering through the picture postcard, UNESCO World Heritage listed Old Town, with its provincial, laid-back air, it's hard to believe that Bern is the capital of Switzerland. Bern's flag festooned, cobbled center, rebuilt in distinctive gray-green sandstone after a devastating fire in 1405, is an aesthetic delight, with 3.75 miles of covered arcades, cellar shops and bars, and fantastical folk figures frolicking on 16th-century fountains. From the surrounding hills, you're presented with an equally captivating picture of red roofs arrayed on a spit of land within a bend of the R River. In a nutshell, Bern seduces and surprises at every turn. Its museums are excellent, its drinking scene dynamic and its residents happy to switch from their famously lilting dialect to textbook French, High German or English, which all goes to show that there's more to Bern than bureaucracy. How to get to Bern? Trains run at least hourly from Zurich, and the journey takes between an hour and an hour and a half. 5. Lauterbrunnen Lauterbrunnen's wispy Stabbach Falls inspired both Goethe and Lord Byron to pen poems to their ethereal beauty. Today the postcard perfect village, nestled deep in the valley of 72 waterfalls, attracts a less highfalutin crowd. Laid back and full of chalet-style lodgings, Lauterbrunnen is a great base for nature lovers wishing to hike or climb, and a magnet for thrill-seeking base jumpers. How to get to Lauterbrunnen, trains run from Zurich every 30 minutes, requiring changes in Bern and Interlaken. The total travel time is about two and a half hours. 6. Jungfraujoch The train ride up to Jungfraujoch, 11,332 feet, is one of Switzerland's classic experiences. 
Following an audacious route right through the heart of the Eiger, the railway was completed in 1912 and today carries more than 2 million people a year through some of Europe's most phenomenal high alpine scenery. The icy wilderness of swirling glaciers and 13,000 feet turrets that unfolds up top is staggeringly beautiful. Outside there are views of the moraine-streaked 14-mile-long tongue of the Aletsch Glacier, the longest glacier in the Alps and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The views across rippling peaks stretch as far as the Black Forest in Germany on cloudless days. Inside the adjacent Sphinx weather station you'll find ice sculptures, restaurants, indoor viewpoints and souvenir shops. How to get to Jungfraujik? Jungfraujik makes for a long day trip from Zurich, but if you have limited time in Switzerland, this is a journey worth making. The fastest trains from Zurich can take you to the mountain in just over 3.5 hours, so get an early start. 7. Liechtenstein a pipsqueak of a country, Liechtenstein snuggles between Switzerland and Austria, among mountain ranges that rise steep and rugged above the Rhine. Besides the sheer novelty value of visiting one of the world's tiniest and richest countries, Liechtenstein is pure fairy tale stuff, a mountain principality governed by an iron-willed monarch, embedded deep in the Alps and crowned by turreted castles. The western, more populated side of the country is in the Rhine Valley and relatively flat, the east is mountainous. Outdoor enthusiasts are in their element here, with a remarkable number of trails to hike and slopes to ski given the country's size. Strike out into the alpine wilderness beyond Vaduz and, suddenly, this landlocked sliver of a micronation no longer seems quite so small. How to get to Liechtenstein? Only 15.5 miles long by 7.5 miles wide, at its broadest point, Liechtenstein doesn't have an international airport, and access from Switzerland is by local bus. From Zurich, hop on a train to Sargans, a Swiss border town, journey time 55 minutes. From there, frequent buses head to Vaduz, the capital of Liechtenstein, taking about 30 minutes. For drivers, the Swiss Autobahn 13, E43 follows the Rhine along the border, and minor roads cross into Liechtenstein at each freeway exit. 8. Mount Titlis Central Switzerland's tallest mountain, Mount Titlis, is known for the world's first revolving cable car. This was completed in 1992 and is still one of the few on the planet. It's just the last leg of a breathtaking three-stage journey. First, you board the TITLIS Express from Engelberg, 3,323 feet, to Trub C, 5,905 feet, and on to Stand, 8,038 feet. Finally, in Stand you board the Rotaire, only the cabin inside revolves, for the passage over the dazzling Titlis Glacier. The Titlis Station, 9,908 feet, has all the usual array of restaurants and tourist attractions, such as an adventure park, scooter bike and alpine flower trails. Top of the list would have to be the TITLIS Cliff Walk. Europe's highest suspension bridge at 1640 ft above the ground, it's free to walk along this steel 328 feet long, 3 ft wide bridge. Grit your teeth and enjoy it. To the 10,625 feet summit, it's about a 45-minute hike, wear sturdy shoes. It doesn't look far, but at this altitude you need to take it slowly. How to get to Mount Titlis? Trains from Zurich to Engelberg run once an hour, with a journey time of 1 hour and 45 minutes. A change is required in Lucerne. 9. Rhinefall formed by tectonic shifts during the last ice age 15,000 years ago, the Rhinefall is a real crashbang spectacle, raging at a speed of around 24,720 cubic feet per second as it spills 75 feet into a basin in a series of swirling cascades, billowing plumes of spray and raging white water. Europe's biggest plain waterfall is best surveyed on the trail that wends down from medieval Schloss Lofen or on one of the boats that cross to the rock that rises above it. How to get to Rheinfall? The S9 train from Zurich drops visitors at Neuhausen Rheinfall station after a journey of 55 minutes. 10. Basel Thousands of art and architecture lovers visit Basel each year for the world-famous Art Basel Festival and the city's wealth of galleries, museums and iconic buildings. Basel's position at the juncture of the French, German and Swiss borders adds to its multicultural appeal, and it's perhaps the place where Switzerland's Franco-Germanic roots are most evident, although the dominant language spoken is Swiss-German. 
It's easy to spend a day wandering the cobbled streets of the lofty and beautiful Altstadt in Grossbasel, Greater Basel, on the Rhine South Bank before crossing the Middeler Bruck to Kleinbasel, Little Basel, for a more everyday vibe and riverside alfresco dining. How to get to Basel? Frequent trains operate between Zurich and Basel, with the journey taking about an hour.